What's up everybody, Randy79 here, and today we're going to go over my prepared hardware and settings for my computer, uh, in-game options and settings and uh, some add-ons and everything else I, got, I can then put in this video to help you guys out. I'm getting a lot of requests for this, so let's go ahead and do it. First off for the hardware, I have a uh, Asus ROG motherboard uh, Maximus VI Genie. I have an i7-4790K. Um, processor overclocked at 4.7 i have 16 gigabytes of ram ddr3 overclocked at 2.13 and uh when you get this asus board you get this um overclock uh software so it's pretty good that's what i use to do my overclocking monitor my temperatures that kind of thing on my cpu i'm running a uh i believe it's a corsair h 100i version 2. First one, uh, it, it just stopped working. I got it was on a warranty, so got that done. For my uh, hard drives or my drives, I have OS, my operating system is Windows 10. Had it running on an SSD drive. I believe it's a 850 Evo. And for prepared, it's running on a uh, Samsung 840 Pro SSD. Um, and I have a two terabyte hard drive that I use for, if I use uh, any kind of recording off this this PC, I use that hard drive, that two terabyte for that recording. Um, for the graphics card, I use a EVGA and an ADTI Superclock Plus, and it's slightly overclocked. I use MSI Afterburner tool to overclock. It's at uh, 110 max. Power limit, core clocks plus 103. Memory clock plus 149. I use that to just barely overclock the uh, the uh, an ADTI. So let's see what else we got here. All right, so that's for hardware. Um, like I said, if you're gonna overclock, make sure you have good good cooling. Make sure you know what you're doing. Um, I do have hyper threading off in my uh, BIOS. So all right, so let's get started with the next part, which will be NVIDIA Inspector. All right, so for NVIDIA Inspector, what you need to do is make sure you install it, run it as admin. Um, I want to do a fresh driver install using, uh, there's a couple of tools you can use to do a fresh install of your NVIDIA drivers. Um, let's go ahead and go to our prepared 3D profile. Have it saved, but I want to show you what's at here. All right there. Okay, so. I have mine saved right here. So I don't mess with anything with the uh, frame limiter or any of that stuff up there. Under anti-aliasing for 10 1080p playing, I have anti-aliasing mode set at enhance the application setting and anti-aliasing transparency super sampling at eight times sparse grid super sampling. That's pretty heavy on frames sometimes in clouds, but uh, I have a pretty good machine and it kind of works very well. And I don't have the white dots over the air orbix airports or fences and like light poles you don't see like a bunch of uh white dots and stuff around there that's why i like it uh down here everything's default except for texture filtering quality is high performance and i have a single uh, display right now and i'm using uh max power when you're done with that make sure you push apply a couple times done okay let's look at rex direct now all right, so I have under options uh, clouds all checked, skies all checked, sun checked, water and runaway unchecked. Airports I have one checked, surface refraction, which is cool for the pretty cool for like the rain effects and stuff, and sound effects all checked. Now I use water, I use Rex Essentials uh, Service Pack 3 for water, so we'll go over that in a second. My theme. Put it up real quick. It's not. It's not too crazy because I don't use much. Um, set 13, 
set 23 soft clouds, set 4 electricity for lightning. Um, this sky clouds that change sometimes, set 7 mariner. For default, I use set 5 ocean view, and for dusk, set 3 dust. Sun effects, set 10. Uh, none of this applies here. Sun effects is on 1. Okay. Uh, make sure you're set up and prepared. Um, and I have for low level clouds, 512, mid level, 512, runaway and taxiways, 1024. Uh, DX5 for both mid level and low level clouds, DX1 for wave animation, and DX11, DX10, DX11. So for sun, water, and wave animation. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, let's go to Rex Essentials. This I use for water only. All right. Uh, options. So under wave animation, checked. DX11 optimized, checked. Uh, water resolution, 1024 by 1024. Wave animation, DXT1. If you have this from older FSX installs, you can upgrade to Pair 3D for $5, which I did, and it's worth it. Textures. Uh, inland water textures. Deep blue eyes. Ocean water textures. Ocean blue. Tropical water textures. TS. Sparkling for wave animation. This is the big one. That's all I use for that. It's pretty simple. Take a little while to close out on that one. I use Active Sky 2016 for P3D and Active Sky Next SP5 for FSX. So, so yeah, 2016. Nothing really crazy in here. I use real weather options. Um, download interval 15. Uh, let's see here. All everything's pretty much default. Suppress local weather. I have unchecked. Depict hurricanes. I have on. Cloud options. Mass Cloud Options 5, Mass Cloud Turbulence 100, Mass Cloud Icing 100, Prevent the Thunderstorms when CB reported off, Minimum Cloud uh, minimum cloud Draw Distance 90, Maximum 90, Force Broken to 7 eighths, Checked, P3D Low Cloud Offset 0, Major Thunderstorm Clouds off, Unchecked, Cloud Motion Effect on, what options? Uh, nothing's changed here at all. Uh, enhanced turbulence is off. I do enable uh, under visibility options. Enable wing uh, effect on. Fog layer on. Disable the uh, default haze layer. Mm, I might turn that back on later. Anyways, minimum surface visibility zero. Maximum surface visibility seventy-five. Maximum upper one hundred. I do adjust upper visibility and cloud visibility reduction, yes. The biggest thing I do here is Simtex messages all off. All right. Uh, real quick, one thing you should do when you do, uh, you install a new texture pack or change settings. You want to change out your shaders. You want to delete that, sh that shaders folder. So go to my computer, uh, users, your name. App data, if, it, if that's, you can't find that, make sure you, you look up how to uh, open in hidden files. Is this a hidden file? Local, Lockheed Martin, Paired 3D, Shaders. I'm going to delete all these. And this is going to refresh our shaders when we start the game. So there's no corruption, no issues. I do that quite often. Okay, now let's look at FTX. Central for global version three, check. I right, so I have global open LCs. I got some other uh, scenario packs installed and vector. The first thing you want to do if you're going to install a new, a new, uh, say a non Orbix airport, you want to make sure you're after you're done. You want to go to library ins insertion points, make sure those payware airports or whatever you install are above the FTX entry and the OLC entry. Okay, that's very important. Make sure this is always on top, above OLC. Make sure pay where there is not Orbix is above this. Okay. That was a new. Uh... Oh yeah, this is an update for the Western Western Europe road mi roads missing. I'll do that later. All right. So if you install a new, uh, say you install a new uh, 
a new airport, I would always advise installing the latest Orbs Libs before and after you do use uh, Central. I do that all the time. But let's say you installed your Libs file. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, let's just go quick over my settings in Vector. I have roads all, roads primary, highways and primary done. I uh, check. Um, the reason I have some of these off is to help with VAS. Um, territory roads and uh, secondary roads off, railways ro ro on, water, small rivers, everything else and various features checked. Airport elevation corrections. I go ahead, um, once you install your airport, run the auto config, it'll go through its thing, and then I'll say push apply. You hit that little button OK and push apply. I do have Australia installed. So, so let's say we just install an, an airport here. Um, you want to find your actual libs file? Be right back. Let me try to find it. All right, so we're at the orbs. Um, we're at version, I think it's 1607. Make sure you have the latest uh, Orbix library. You can go to the Orbix, just put Orbix libs, and it'll go to it in uh, Google, P3D. Yes, you wanna, it's gonna should should point to your P3D install and install. I install this a lot. I do this a lot just to make sure everything's in the right place. It puts your Orbix sceneries in the right place. You should be good to go. All right, it's a quick, very very quick uh, down dirty. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Look at my in-game settings options, and we'll do a little. Uh, um, fly around or we'll fly out of Cardiff of England. So I have Open LC Europe on England, which is pretty hardcore with these. Um, it's pretty pretty hard on the actual system. It's not. I don't think it's optimized correctly, but and we use a default plane or like an A10 or something. That's not not too crazy. And we'll go through with uh, live weather and we'll go from there. Be right back. All right. So on graphics, 1920 by 1080. FXAA off. MSAAA. At eight times sampling and texture filtering at entrostopic 16x texture resolution at high 2048 hardware tessellation enabled vsync i have on unlimited frames okay pretty simple level of detail max tessellation factor high mess resolution two mil two meter texture resolution 15 centimeter land detail texture checked Scenery complexity very dense, auto gen very dense, auto building dense. Special effects have high. I do run uh, uh, precept FX, I believe it's called, and um, that's why I have it on high. If not, put it on medium. Water water detail on high. Clouds, user vehicle, and terrain for reflections. Uh, Bathermity, whatever how you say that, is off. Lighting, uh, HDR lighting. Brightness 1.113, plume 0.99, saturation 0.87, dynamic reflections off, landing lights and lens flare on, shadow quality is medium, uh, train shadow and cloud shadow is 20, object is 3000, internal is cast received, external vehicles cast. Weather, I usually have on 60, but Active Sky likes to bump it up for whatever reason, even though I put it down. Volumetric fog and uh, detail clouds are on. Traffic, I use Ultimate Traffic 2. Right now I have 100% airline traffic, so we could have some frame drop in game, but I should have turned that off for this test, but we're just going to go real with it. Airport vehicle density, medium. Land vehicles, zero. Ships and ferries and uh, leisure boats, 20. All right, we're going to load up. I had some issues uh, with my recording software. It looked great uh, in-game, but uh, it was kind of crappy, so I'm going to try different software here to record. All righty. Go outside, take a look. Turn our frame rates on. Mm -hmm. 
Let's get airborne. Back to Sky 2016 on, live weather. We'll see what happens. So weather isn't that bad right now, so. So I can say frames aren't bad. England is a really pretty hardcore uh, area for your computer. <laughs> P3D and I have OpenLC on, so I want to do a pretty hardcore area. Um, England is. Keep it about right there. Auto gen's looking really good. Good frames. Solid and smooth. And since I've done this these settings, I've had no crash of desktops, nothing. It's been been really good actually. A little bit of blurring here and there. That's uh, that happened after the Orbix migration for me. When a plane gets like right next to the scenery, it'll it'll get get sharp and it won't stay that way forever. It's mostly in high uh, high autogen areas or mountain peaks, but you can tell this is gorgeous. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will uh, be looking for your comments in the comment section and uh hope you guys enjoyed. Render seven nine out.